Chapter 19. Keep Yourself Happy. One of the most important keys to a better life is to keep yourself happy, rather than living to please everybody else. It's easy to take on a false sense of responsibility, thinking that it is our job to keep everybody happy, to fix this person, to rescue that person, or to solve another person's problem. Certainly, it is noble and admirable to want to help as many people as possible, and it is always good to reach out to others in need. Too often, though, we get out of balance. We are doing everything for everybody else, but we're not taking any time to keep ourselves healthy. I've discovered that when I try to keep everybody around me happy by trying to meet all their needs, I'm the one who ends up suffering. God does not want you to sacrifice your happiness to keep somebody else happy. At first brush, that may sound a little selfish, but there's a tenuous balance here. Your first priority is to take care of yourself. To do so, you must recognize that some people are still not going to be happy no matter what you do for them, no matter how nice you are, no matter how much time and energy you give them. They have their own issues with which to deal or things inside that they need to resolve. You should not take responsibility for someone else's poor choices. If you do, before long, that person will be controlling you and manipulating you. Maybe you are stressed because you are allowing someone else to dull your happiness, it may be a spouse, a child, a friend, or a neighbor. They won't do right, they're always dumping their problems on you. They expect you to bail them out of every problem and keep them cheered up. Now you are frustrated because you are spending so much time and energy on them. It seems like every time you get that person fixed up, he or she is back a week later with that same problem. If you continue to help them, you're not only hurting yourself, but you are doing them a disservice as well. You've become a crutch to them. Because as long as they know they can come running to you, making you feel guilty and talking you into solving all their problems, then they will never deal with the real issues. They won't change. Truth is, some people don't really want to be helped, they don't want to change. They like the attention their perpetual dilemmas bring them. Sometimes, the best thing you can do for somebody like that is not to help them. Consider a small child. If every time that child throws a fit, you come running over and give him exactly what he wants, he will continue that pattern. The child knows what he has to do to get his way, and he will try to use that to control you. But if the child yells and screams, and you don't give in, you just ignore it or reprimand him for his behavior, it won't be long before he realizes that throwing a fit isn't working. The same principle is true for adults. As long as you allow somebody to pressure you into doing what he or she wants, he or she will continue to do it. But, friend, life is too short to go through it being controlled and manipulated by people who refuse to make good choices on their own. Please understand, you are not responsible for everybody else's happiness. You are responsible for your own happiness. If people are controlling you, it's not their fault, it's your fault. You must learn to set some boundaries. Quit allowing them to call you at all hours of the day and night to dump their problems on you. Quit catering to them and giving in every time they throw a fit. Quit lending them money every time they make poor choices. Let them take responsibility for their actions. You needn't be harsh or uncaring, but sometimes we can be so good-hearted and generous that we allow people to control us. At some point we have to realize that we are not helping that person anymore. Beyond that, now they are hurting us. Many people go around all upset, frustrated, and discouraged because they've made the mistake of taking on a false sense of responsibility for somebody close to them who won't do what is right. They carry a heavy load, trying to fix the person, or trying to keep someone else happy. You can be free from all that if you will just give those people to God. Quit trying to be the keeper of the universe. That's not your job. You can't make everybody do what's right. You can't make your children serve God. You can't force your relative to make good decisions. Take the pressure off yourself and let God deal with them. But, Joel, if I don't loan them money they may lose their house, I hear someone saying. If I don't call him every morning, he will get angry at me. Or, if I don't give in when she throws a fit, she may not talk to me for two weeks. All that may be true. But do you want to live the next 20 years like that? Or do you want to help that person get free? Because you are not doing anyone a favor by allowing him or her to control you. 
In fact, in a sense, you are hurting that person because you are allowing him or her to take the easy way out. I realize that at first, it may be difficult to say no to the stress-inducing controller, but if you'll put your foot down and make these necessary changes, in the long run your life and that other person's life are both going to be much better. Linda and Troy's marriage was miserable. Linda came from an extremely negative family environment where she had endured many unfair hardships growing up. Unfortunately, she dragged her unhappiness and negativism right into her marriage with Troy. If she didn't get her way, she would pout or throw a tantrum. Sometimes, she would pout for two or three days. She was always having some kind of crisis where she needed attention. She was miserable and she did her best to make everyone around her equally as miserable. Troy was a good man and a good husband, so he did almost anything he could to keep Linda happy. He was always encouraging her, trying to fix her problems, and letting her know she was going to be okay. For three years, he catered to her every need, giving up his own happiness in a futile attempt to keep Linda happy. Then one day it dawned on him that she was never going to change. He finally was fed up. He realized that although he had good intentions, he was not helping her anymore, he was hurting her. He had become her crutch. Troy boldly went to Linda and said, Honey, I love you, but I realize there's nothing I can do to keep you happy. I've done everything I can. So I'm just letting you know that I'm finished trying. Troy's honest and heartfelt statement stunned Linda, forcing her to look inside herself and deal with the real issues. Beyond that, as Troy followed through and no longer coddled her, Linda had to take responsibility for her own actions. That wake-up call took place more than 20 years ago, and today their marriage is stronger than ever. If you are in a relationship with somebody similar to Linda, don't allow that person to steal your joy. Do not go through life unhappy because somebody close to you is unhappy. If they insist on making poor choices, choosing to live depressed and in the pits, be kind and courteous, but don't get in the pits with them. At the right time, and in a controlled voice, tell that person, if you don't want to be happy, that's fine, but you're not going to keep me from being happy. Certainly, there's a very fine line here, but you are not responsible for your spouse's happiness. Nor are you responsible for your children's happiness. All of us are responsible to keep ourselves happy. If you are on the flip side of this issue, and you are the person who is doing the controlling, pardon me for being so blunt, but it is time for you to grow up and take responsibility for your own life. Quit relying on that other person to carry you. Quit demanding that your spouse cheer you up every day and work constantly to keep you encouraged. That's not fair to the other person. Stop manipulating that person when he or she does not comply with your wishes or do what you want. No, take responsibility and learn to keep yourself happy. I'm not talking today about being selfish or self-centered. We should be givers. But there's a big difference between giving and allowing somebody to control you and make you. Feel guilty until you do what they want. God has not called you to be unhappy simply to keep somebody else happy. Again, if you are allowing that, the other person is not the only one at fault. You may have taken on a false sense of responsibility and now you are allowing them to control you. God has not called you to be unhappy simply to keep somebody else happy. If you are in a relationship where you do the majority of the giving and always encourage or rescue the other person, that is a clear sign that something is out of balance. You've become a crutch, and unless you make some changes, the relationship will continue to flounder. You must take a stand. You can do it in love, but you need to go to that person and say, I love you, but I'm not going to allow you to keep dumping your problems on me and making my life miserable. I'm not going to let you keep draining all my time and energy. You have to take responsibility and learn to keep yourself happy. Well, Joel, if I do that, they may get their feelings hurt, I hear you saying. They may get angry, yes, they might, but that is between them and God. When you stand before God, he's not going to ask you, did you keep everybody around you happy? He's going to ask you, did you fulfill the call that I placed on your life? Ben was 31 years of age and still living at home. He was lazy and undisciplined, and wouldn't go out and get a job. He just liked to sit around the house and watch television. Ironically, he didn't think that he had a problem. He didn't see anything wrong with that lifestyle, 
In fact, as far as he was concerned, life was great. Ben's parents catered to him constantly because they loved their son and didn't want to be too hard on him. Occasionally, they tried to get him to go out and apply for a job, but he ignored their requests and refused to take any initiative. Why should he? He had no motivation. The situation continued year after year. One day, Ben's parents were so distraught by their son's sluggardly behavior, they went to a professional counselor for help. The parents explained the situation to the doctor and told him how their son was extremely lazy. Doctor, on top of all of this, our son doesn't even think that he has a problem, one of the parents lamented. The doctor's reply shocked the parents. He said, well, I agree with your son. He doesn't have a problem. You have the problem because you have delivered him out of all his problems. He went on to say, you have buffered him from any pain and you have helped him avoid responsibility for his own life. If you want your son to get better, you need to give him back his problem. The parents were too stunned to speak, so the doctor continued, you must stop making it so easy on him. Quit delivering him out of all his trouble. It is difficult to understand, but it is not always the best thing to rescue somebody and make his life easy. It's not always best to solve his problems for him. Sometimes you have to say, I love you, but if you're going to live in my household, you're going to have to get up and go get a job. You're going to have to start taking some responsibility. The Bible says, if you don't work, you won't eat. You may need to say, if you don't go get a job, you're about to find out what it means to go on a long, long fast. I heard somebody say that there are two important qualities all of our children need to have. They need to be grateful and they need to be eager. If they're not grateful, they will take everything for granted. They will expect everybody to give them what they need on a silver platter. They also need to be eager, eager to learn, eager to serve, eager to achieve, eager to be better than they are currently. Sometimes as parents, we like to make life too easy for our children. Victoria and I have some help around the house and the easy thing is to let the housekeeper make sure our children's rooms are clean. But I know that is not the best thing. As I write these words, our children are 12 and 8, and every morning they make their own beds, get their own clothes together, and get dressed by themselves. When they come downstairs, they have their chores to do. Sure, Victoria or I could do it ourselves, or we could pay somebody to do those same chores. But I know that if we make it too easy for our children, they will develop the wrong habits and mindsets, and our excessive kindness will actually hurt our children later on in life. Adults, too, need to be grateful and eager. I have a tendency to want to help everybody. I want to solve all their problems. Let me do it for you. But I have to realize that's not always the best. Several years ago, I ran into a homeless man who was about my age. He asked me for some money, and I was about to hand him a $20 bill, but I felt a check in my heart and mind, so instead of handing him some money and going on my way, I engaged the homeless man in conversation. As we talked, he told me his story, how he had gone from city to city and had lived a rough life. He tried to hold down a job, but it just didn't work out. I felt compassion for the man, and I really wanted to help him, so I invited him to church. I said, hey, I'm a pastor of a church here in town. Where are you on Sunday mornings? I'll have somebody come by and pick you up. Oh, no, I can't come to church, he said. I don't have time to come to church. I thought, man, what are you going to be doing? You don't have to mow your lawn. You don't have to clean your house. The more I talked to him, the more I realized he didn't want to be helped. He didn't want to change. He preferred to take the easy way out. He just wanted my money. Please understand, I'm not saying he didn't have a hard life, but when people don't want to change, when they don't want to be helped, we do them a disservice by delivering them out of all their problems. I could have easily given him that money and been on my way, but I didn't want to do anything to prolong his misery. Yes, we should help the needy, but there comes a point where if you continue to help somebody who refuses to try to help himself or herself, you are actually hurting that person more than you're helping. Too often, we are controlled by others more than we realize. I've got to work 60 hours a week or my boss will look down on me. He won't invite me to important meetings. 
He'll leave me out. No, recognize what's happening. You are being manipulated and you need to set some boundaries. Go to your boss and say, here's what I'm able to do. I cannot work late every night. I have a family. I have other commitments. When I am here at work, I'll give you 110%. But when the workday is over, I will leave the work here and go home. You need to confront it. Don't allow yourself to be manipulated or coerced into doing something out of guilt. Start paying attention to why you respond certain ways and why you do certain things. Maybe you are operating more out of guilt than out of desire or destiny. You are working late night after night because you feel guilty about leaving when others in the office are staying. Or maybe you are helping somebody because you feel guilty, you're overcommitted, worn out, and run down because you're afraid you're going to hurt somebody's feelings. This is all rooted in that taking on a false sense of responsibility, trying to keep everybody happy. You should not feel guilty because you can't meet the demands that others arbitrarily put on you. You must change how you respond. If every time you disagree with your spouse, you get the cold shoulder and life is miserable for the next four hours, that's a form of manipulation. The next time something similar happens, you need to address it. Don't respond the same way. Well, she's ignoring me. I'll show her. I'll go to the ball game. Or, I'll go play golf. Or, I'm going shopping. No, if you'll change how you respond and not give in and not play those games, it will force the other person to change how he or she responds. Say a person invites you to an event, so you check your schedule and realize you are too busy to attend, but you feel the pressure to acquiesce. You know the person will get upset if you decline. You may even fall out of their good graces. You must recognize that as a controlling spirit, and you need to be able to say, I would love to go, I'm sorry. I'm just not going to be able to accept your invitation. If they can't understand, then that's their problem. To reduce your stress, be aware of high maintenance people in your life. These people are almost impossible to keep happy. You have to call them so many times a week. You must respond at their beck and call. If not, they're going to get upset, they'll be disappointed in you. And they'll attempt to make sure you feel guilty about it. I've found that high maintenance people are usually controllers. They're not interested in you, they're interested in what you can do for them. They're interested in how you can make their life better. If you fall into the trap of trying to keep them happy, you're going to be weary and worn out, and you're going to be frustrated in your own life. Many years ago, I attempted to help a married couple. They were fine people and I really liked them. In fact, when they moved to another state, I gave them some money and I tried to stay in touch. If they ever needed anything, I was always available. But it seemed like I was never doing enough. They were never happy. I was being kind and generous, but they never saw any of that. They continually found some reason to complain, to find fault, or to make me feel guilty as though I was not doing enough to help them. One day I realized that they are just high maintenance people and I am not responsible to keep them happy. I can't make them like me. I can't make them be grateful. I need to just run my race and not allow them to steal my joy. I continued to be their friend, but I had to step back and let them work on making themselves happy. That made me very happy. That's a very freeing way to live. Examine how you spend your time and check your motives as to why you do what you do. Is it out of guilt? Is it because somebody is manipulating or controlling you? If so, make some changes. If you don't take control of your life, others will, and they may take you places you don't want to go. You must be secure enough in yourself to tell people no. If you refuse a friend's invitation to dinner and he or she gets upset, understand something. He is not responding out of love or friendship that person is attempting to manipulate you. She is using you for what she wants. A true friend understands. A true friend doesn't get upset when you can't meet every one of his or her requests. These days, I get numerous invitations to speak in all sorts of venues, and I'm always honored to be asked. But between my obligations to Lakewood Church and to my family, I'm not able to accept most invitations, even those from close friends or people that I've loved and respected for many years. At first, it was extremely difficult for me to say no to requests, because I don't like to disappoint people. But I've learned that I must take care of myself. That's my first priority. 
After that comes my family. The first few times I declined those invitations, I was nervous, wondering what people would think. They may think that I've gotten a big head, I fretted, that I think I'm too important. But every time those people wrote back, they said, Joel, it's no big deal. It's no problem. Whenever you can come, the invitation is always open. That is a true friend, somebody who is not merely concerned for his own interests. A true friend will not try to pressure you and make you feel guilty when you don't do exactly as she wants. It is liberating to understand that you don't have to keep everybody happy. More important, I really believe that if you live your life just trying to please people, you will not be able to fulfill your God-given destiny. When I went away to college, after my first year, I knew deep down on the inside that I was supposed to come back to Lakewood and start a television outreach. I felt it so strongly, but I was concerned about what my parents were going to think. After all, my brothers and sisters had all graduated from college. My brother Paul had spent 12 years or more in study and preparation to be a surgeon, so when I left school and went back home, I didn't know how my parents would respond. I talked to my father about it one day, and he was open to the possibilities. He said, Joel, that'd be great. Just do what you feel good about doing. Daddy was fine with my leaving school and developing the television ministry at Lakewood. My mother, however, was a different story. Mother needed prayer. She couldn't stand the thought of one of her children not graduating from college. That was tough for me. As I said, I don't like to disappoint people, especially my parents. But I finally had to make the decision to do what I felt good about. I had to follow my own heart. Of course, my mother eventually came around. I told her the other day, Mother, I didn't graduate from college, but I'm doing pretty well today. Sometimes, you're not going to be able to keep everybody happy, even your closest loved ones. Of course, we should honor our parents, respect them, and listen to their advice. In the end, you have to follow your own heart. An intriguing scripture verse says, They have made me a keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. Solomon was saying, I was real good at keeping everybody else happy. I kept my parents happy, I kept my family happy. I took care of all my relatives and my friends. But in doing so, I neglected to take care of myself. Too often, we live to please everybody else, but we neglect to take time to please ourselves. We end up allowing somebody else to run and control our lives. If you allow them, some people will draw all the time and energy right out of you. You would see your life go to a new level if you dared to confront those people and start making the necessary changes. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. If people have controlled you for a long time, they're not going to like you're putting your foot down. Always do what you must in love, be kind and respectful, but stand firm and make a decision that you will live in freedom. If you are the controller rather than the person being controlled, you too need to change. You're not going to be blessed by manipulating people to get your way. Quit pressuring people into doing what you want. Take the high road, walk in love, and you'll see your relationships and life become so much better. Let this be a turning point. If you have been living to please everybody else, or constantly trying to fix everything, rid yourself of that false sense of responsibility. Yes, reach out to others. Yes, be kind and be compassionate. But make sure that you're keeping yourself happy. After God, you are your first priority. Friend, if you will run your race and not let people control you and manipulate you, You'll not only have less stress and more time and energy, but I also believe you'll be happier, and you will be free to fulfill the best plan that God has for you.